This tape is produced and distributed by International Christian Media. For a catalog of other tapes and publications, please write International Christian Media, Box 30, Dallas, Texas, 75221. From Dallas, Texas, via satellite, this is Point of View, the talk show that's different, featuring interviews, issue discussions, and phone calls from across the nation. And now, here's your host, Marlon Maddox. And thank you for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. And I might say, down here in Texas, uh, we are experiencing some cold weather. In fact, the headlines of the Dallas Morning News says Dallas area bracing for deep freeze and ice storm and residents stock up on staples. So if you're in the middle of some cold weather somewhere this afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you stay warm. I hope you stay warm. Here's an item from the news that uh, should be of interest to those of us who are over age 40 or maybe even 45. And those of us who remember the golden days of radio before television. Uh, you remember as kids, we used to come home after school and listen to adventure stories on radio like Captain Midnight, Terry and the Pirates, Tom Mix, Hop Harrigan. And I guess one of the best, one of the most famous, one of the most long-running, what I call kids show on radio was one called Jack Armstrong, All-American Boy. Well, the man who wrote those scripts that uh, you and I listened to and kept us glued to the radio has just died. According to the wire service, a retired Army officer who wrote scripts for the 1940s radio drama Jack Armstrong, All-American Boy, has died in a Savannah, Georgia hospital. He was Brigadier General Pascal Nielsen Strong, and he served in World War II and in Korea, and when he was stationed overseas, uh, he wrote for Jack Armstrong. Well, here's a little something for those of you over the age of 40 or 45, and also for those of you who are younger. It's kind of a little glimpse into what it was like to be a kid and sit in front of your radio on a cold, wintry day in the 30s and 40s and listen to Jack Armstrong. Jack Armstrong! Jack Armstrong! Jack Armstrong, the all-American boy. Wave the Piper Hudson High, boys. Show them how we stand. Ever shall our team be champions known throughout the land. Wheaties, breakfast of champions. Bring you the thrilling adventures of Jack Armstrong, the All-American Boy. And now, Jack Armstrong, the All-American Boy. Jack and Billy are rowing their hearts out, getting the last of the supplies aboard the two-master schooner Spindrift. The Spindrift rides her mooring like a gray ghost, while the San Francisco fog hides her from the view of hostile eyes on shore. The schooner is all ready to start on her perilous journey to the Sulu Sea in the Philippines to recover a precious cargo of uranium sunk off an uncharted reef. Jack and Billy, as they bend to the oars, know that other persons are trying desperately to get possession of a mysterious ring which Uncle Jim has just received, a ring which may contain the secret of the uranium. Betty, alone on the schooner in the fog, is having the fright of her life, but Jack doesn't know it. Yeah. Listen. Yes, Billy, but this fog is thick. Well, you could cut it with a knife. I'll pay, Jack. You bet we've rode a hundred miles just taking supplies out to the spindrift. I uh, know we have. Uncle Jim must be taking on enough stuff to take us to the Sulu Sea and back without stopping. Never saw so much hike. All right. I'm sorry I don't have the rest of that adventure for you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> That's kind of an insight in what it was like to be kids uh, during the 40s, the 30s and the 40s and so on. And uh, you can understand why we rushed home and sat glued to the radio. And here's a story that comes from American Press International. It says Sheldon Andelson, a 
prominent fundraiser for Democratic presidential candidate Walter Mondale in 1984 and presidential contender Senator Ted Kennedy in 1980 has died of complications from AIDS at age 56. A multimillionaire lawyer, member of the University of California Board of Regents, bank founder and prominent homosexual, Andelson's Bel Air Mansion was known as the Gay White House because of Democratic luminaries who frequented parties there.